Hey guys, today we are going to talk about seven cards that have recently spiked in price. And it's a good discussion because we can review cards that have gone up in price already and take a look at what characteristics and what certain circumstances cause the price to go up on this card. So we will start with Food Chain from Acadian Mask, a much older set. It started at $4 just four years ago, not even four years ago, let's say three and a half years ago, it was $4. Then it kept getting better and better and better. Like I said, Snapcaster is very good because there will always be more instants in sorceries printed and some of them will be good to flash back. The same that can be said about Food Chain. Uh, Food Chain is one of those cards where it only gets better and better. It does have an infinite combo in Legacy and it is part of a deck named Food Chain. I, I do like cards that are the namesake of the deck because it's really hard. It, it's not hard, I guess it's name recognition. So when that deck becomes popular, like Food Chain is becoming semi-popular in Legacy, people will be like, oh, Food Chain, the card. No, no, the deck. So that's why I like Malera Pod. I, when, before it was banned, I like Malera Combo because it's the name of the deck or Death Shadow. It's the name of the deck. Next, Life of the Loam. This is not a mystery. Uh, this is actually quite interesting because it is in a dual deck. And that dual deck itself is under $20 MSRP. Go Gary Grave Trail did get banned. So as soon as it was banned, I saw the dual deck just drop in price. Just plummet in price. And I should have purchased some of them at that time. But if you can find this dual deck for $20 at a Walmart... Barnes & Noble's at a Kmart. Do we still have Kmarts? I don't know. I'm from Texas. And when I lived up north, we'd had a lot of Kmarts. And they were kind of like Walmart, but everything was like 10 years older. Uh, Walmarts, Kmarts, Targets, etc. Or even your local game store. They might have this for $20. Life in the Loam itself is $20 plus. Dollars. So it's worth picking up. Plus you get Golgari Grave Troll. You get a lot of Dredge cards. Uh, Dredge was completely... Not completely, but it was... It lost its best card in Golgari Grave Troll again, so they unbanned it, only to ban it. Still, still a viable legacy card, so I don't dislike it, but the reason this card has gone up in price is because of the cycling land. And we are in a set of cycling cards, and having cycling land is going to influence some of the cards on this particular list. Next, Malera, Princess Malera. There was a time you could buy her for less than a dollar. I was buying her for less than a dollar at this time, and I loved her. Um, she was like a Philia to me, but honestly, I collected more Philias because I don't know why, but I should have split it a little bit better. But Malera was under a dollar, now she's eight. She's part of an infinite combo, and now she's very unique. So when we talk about cards that spike up in price, we talk about how unique they are. The fact that you can't get minus one, creatures you control cannot get minus one, minus one counters is very good if we have an entire set dedicated to minus one, minus one counters, which Amaket looks like it will be. So when we talk about unique cards, they tend to be legendary in nature. They tend to be maybe a little older. New Phyrexia was some time ago. And most importantly, they have this characteristic where they only get better in time because they do something kind of special. So if you had a set with minus one, minus one counters, yes, this price will go up. And it just so happens Amaket is that set. But even beyond Amaket, there will be another set with minus one, minus one counters being you know, very critical. Splendid Reclamation, uh, we got this, um, I got an email from one of my former patrons, one of my subscribers, Bobby, and he was buying this card out. Obviously, it's good because you have cycling land, you cycle the land, you cycle the land, and then you play this card and all the land come back and play. So it reads, return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That's pretty good for four, especially if you can get... Um, What's that? What's that card? One in a red, you discard two cards, draw three cards. That seems very good here, and it, you play red-green. I would love to play that with the cycle on land, because not only do you naturally cycle, but you're also naturally discarding the land, and you can just play this and get them all back. 
Very interesting card. It does work with Fetch lands quite well because it's all land. It's not all non-basic land, which would make the card, which is probably what they wanted to make the card say, but it's all land. So let's say in modern is a little slow, but you could fetch, 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 bring back all your fetches and keep continuing to fetch for a huge amount of land on turn four. Overall, pretty good card. Definitely not the 50 cent bulk card anymore, but definitely not the $7 card that it started out with. Now, restore balance. So they changed the ruling on the cards. Uh, on the cards like Brain in a Jar, which, you know, Isochrom Scepter. We've had these cards for a very long time. So when I was making a video about how the split fuse worked, I was quite surprised when people didn't get it because we've had this type of effect since Isochron Scepter and Fire and Ice, right? That's been played so many times in the past, and in ED8 it's played quite often. So Restore Balance is one of these cards with Suspend, and it hasn't gone down in price. It's gone up in price because everything else has gone down in price. Restore Balance is not necessarily in that same deck that plays the, you know, the brain in a jar, the uh, expertise, and now the on maquette cards seem to be kind of pushing this split mechanic. Restore balance is more like ancestral, uh, ancestral visions, not visions, um, the one for one blue and then you draw three cards to spend four. It's called ancestral something, but, oh yeah, it's ancestral visions, the other one's ancestral recall, the pricey one. But it's not, it's more like that than it is like a split fuse card. And lastly, well, I guess we got two cards left, Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam is one of these decks that, it's kind of like the Dreads deck. Sometimes it just goes up in price and sometimes pieces just spike because it is a tier two deck. And when we look at tier two decks, as soon as they do good at a tournament, they go up a tiny bit in price or one card in particular goes up in price. Again, the name of the deck is Ad Nauseam. And you might say, oh, that doesn't matter, right? Death Shadow, Death Zoo. It does matter because whenever the deck does really well and people hear about it, the first card they think about in Ad Nauseam is Ad Nauseam. The first card they think about in Malera Pod before it was banned was Malera. So that's how you can kind of figure out, you know, what are these cards? If the card's so important to the deck, like Death Zoo, that if the card was is the deck is named after the card. That's an interesting speculation, especially if you can get Malera Pod happened when Malera was a dollar. That cannot be right. There has to be price correction for that. When Malera Pod is one of the top, I would say tier one decks at the time, at, when the namesake is a dollar, you got, and the same can apply for Death Shadow. I know it got hit recently and it's not exactly time to buy, but Death Zoo and Death Shadow is part, I mean, it's a very strong deck, and the deck is named after that card. So it has all the elements I think I would want to buy. And lastly, Lotus Bloom. Again, extremely unique effect, not something that I would say we would see very often. Uh, lotuses in general are un not, not uncommon. They're very rare and, and, and magic. Because Lotus, Black Lotus being the first Lotus was the most iconic card in Magic. So whenever they print a Lotus or a Mox and you have that name recognition, you can be sure that generally speaking, it's going to be a good card. Lotus Bloom, extremely unique with the suspendability. A really, really good card. Uh, one of those cards that you look at and you know will get better in time. And that's what my speculation philosophy is. Look at things that look unique maybe or the namesake of a deck and only get better in time. So I can see many reasons Lotus Bloom would go up in price. I can see many scenarios just like Malera where we have a set of minus one, minus one counters. And yes, the, Malera negates that for your creatures, even if you played it yourself. And that's what is happening here is that if you played Malera and then you played a creature that gave itself minus one, minus one counters, it would just be a really big creature. And I mean, it only takes a huge, let's say you have a Death Shadow-like creature that is a 13-13, but it costs two and it gets 12 minus one minus one counters. Well, with Malera, it doesn't get any. It just becomes a huge creature. 
So that's why C got, has gotten up in price. And that's why when we look at these seven cards, they only get better in time. And they're all quite unique at what they do. So anyway, uh, let me know if I missed any cards this week or if you want me to talk about any cards. I do like this format a little bit. It does, um, having seven cards I'm sure is better than having one video, one card, seven videos. I'm sure you guys appreciate that. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye guys.